Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Royce. Uh, you may know me as uh, Max's pawn from the Magic Show last night. Um, it's my third gathering. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's my third gathering, and today I want to talk to you about regular honeycombs. I'm really happy to be here. This is joint work with Henry. Um, I'm going to throw a lot of stuff at you, but what I think I'd like for you guys to take away from the talk is that you can pick any three numbers and you can, and that can represent a honeycomb and we can draw pictures of that. And so I'd like you to take that and, and hopefully enjoy some of the pictures along the way. So uh, to start off with one number instead of three, I want to introduce you to something called Schlafly symbols. And uh, these are really concise and efficient way to represent regular polygons, tilings, and honeycombs. And um, for, in the polygon case, it's really simple. It just, it's a single number that represents the number of sides of the polygon. In the 2D case, uh, it, the, the P still represents the number of sides in the polygon. The Q represents how many of those polygons fit around each vertex. So in the upper left, we have a, we have a cube there, um, uh, uh, tiling of, of a sphere of squares with three squares surrounding each vertex. It's stereographically projected like some of the other talks here. So we move over, we get the Euclidean tiling of squares of the plane, and if we want to put five around each vertex, we get the hyperbolic 4-5 tiling. The, the bottom row are the duals to these, and the only thing I want to point out to, to you guys about that is that the Schlafly symbols are reversed for duals. This is a graph of the parameter space of what I was just talking about. That red line is a sharp boundary of the Euclidean tilings, and to the lower left we have the spherical tilings, and the upper right we have the hyperbolic tilings. Uh, the lower left is the platonic solids, if you want to think about them that way. Uh, so let's go, let's go uh, explore in the upper right and just start moving out in that direction by increasing Q and P. If we want to put more and more squares around each vertex, we can do that by making the squares bigger. And in the limit, we can actually fit an infinite number of them around each vertex if the vertices have gone all the way to the boundary of hyperbolic space. And these are called ideal points. Uh, the, the vertices of the square, when they're finite, we call material points. And uh, at the bottom, again, are the duals. In this case, we're increasing the number of sides of the polygon out to infinity at the bottom right. It's become an infinity gone with a center that's all the way out at infinity. And uh, I think it's cool that it's not a circle in this case. Can we do infinity, infinity? You bet. Uh, this is infinity gones with an infinite number surrounding each vertex, um, which I think is neat. <laughs> uh, so now that we've moved through all of the 2D tilings, let's go to 3D. And uh, the Schlafly symbol, in this case, you take the PQ polyhedron or tiling and you put R of them around each edge. And so the, the one on the left is the hypercube. It's made of four three cubes, and three of them fit around each edge. If we put four around each edge, we get a Euclidean stacking of blocks of cubes. And uh, if we put five around each edge, we have to go to hyperbolic space as well. And I have some models of these. I, I don't have enough time to show them uh, on the Elmo, but they're at the table near the center there. And you should, should come check them out, see if you can find the, the cube inside these things. They're, it's a lot, it's neat to study these things in person. And they have duals too. The Schlafly symbols are reversed like always. So what if we go to 436? Well, it's interesting in, 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 in the 3D case, we're, we're at the ideal case already. So if we want to fit six cubes uh, around each edge, we're already ideal. We don't have to go to an infinite number. And the dual looks like this. This is just a single cell of the 634. And in this case, the polyhedron is a 63 tiling. Um, and it's got a center that it's got an infinite number of facets, and it's got a center that's ideal as well. It's at the boundary of infinity. All right, so here's the, the 3D graph that's kind of like the 2D graph before. The, um, the, the, the lower left surface is the Euclidean boundary, and there's only one regular honeycomb on that, the, the, the one of cubes. The spherical honeycombs are to the lower left. The hyperbolic ones are to the upper right. And, uh, and these other two surfaces that we've drawn are when PQ is Euclidean or when QR is Euclidean. So that's, that's when either the vertices are ideal or the cell centers are ideal. And what I want to do next is go beyond those surfaces. So we can all count to six. We want to count to seven. Um, can we fit seven around an edge? Yes, we can. And what we have to give up is the finiteness of the cell. So this cube, we've made it bigger. 
and in some sense, the, the vertices of this cube have gone beyond hyperbolic space. We call them hyper-ideal. And you can see the little triangle legs and, uh, and the edge there uh, on the boundary. So the middle is showing six cubes surrounding that central one. And then the far right is 30 more cubes surrounding that. These don't work as well as models because they don't meet at vertices. And so they would just fall apart. But there's an interesting pattern forming on the boundary there. And that turns out to be a really nice way to look at these honeycombs. This is what it looks like with the full boundary uh, drawn out. Uh, I've only shown one cube in the center and made it a little bit translucent so you could see that. If we stereographically project that pattern to the boundary, you get something like this. The, the red here are the, the legs of that central cube. And uh, it's just, it's really beautiful. There's, it ends up causing this just in, infinity of three, seven apparent tilings everywhere. Uh, this is what the dual looks like. You get a pattern that's very similar, but uh, the, instead of the three seven tilings, you get these little disks on the boundary. And uh, a cell in this case is a hyperbolic seven three tiling. It doesn't close up on an ideal point at the boundary. It, it ends up meeting the boundary in a disk. All right, so I'm going to spend the last little bit just to kind of explore through this parameter space of honeycombs and show you some of my favorites. Um, this is the first one that we ever drew, and so it's always going to be one of my favorites. When I first saw the image, I just was kind of blown away. It's a lot like the 437, but with tetrahedral cells instead of cubes. Um, but uh, but it's, I just think it's beautiful. Um, these, this is a, a pair of duels where uh, we're, we're mixing ideal and hyper-ideal in one, which is interesting. And the, on the left, I'll point out the 6-3 the infinity. The vertices are... are uh, you can see these little three infinity tilings for every single vertex in this honeycomb. And they're arranged in a 6-3 in a hexagonal pattern. This actually would cover the entire plane. The image is cut off. Um, and that's a kind of a general, for PQR honeycombs, that's kind of a general pattern here. Um, here's a couple self-dual ones that really stuck out to me when, when we were making images. Uh, the 464, again, you see these little 6-4 tilings. So the QR shows up as these little tilings on the boundary, and they're arranged in a 4-6 pattern. Uh, these I, I wanted to include because they connect to math in an interesting way. The, the left is showing the limit set of the 733 honeycomb, and it's homeomorphic to a Sierpinski carpet, which is cool. On the right, you probably recognize that as the uh, Apollonian circle packing, but it's it's the boundary pattern of the infinity 3-3 honeycomb, which is neat. Uh, here's the 12-12-12. <laughs> so we have little 12-12 tilings. 12 of them are surrounding each edge, and all of this fits into hyperbolic space, and, and this is what you get. And, um, and then finally, the top of the mountain, uh, infinity, infinity, infinity is really possible. Uh, we didn't know what this was going to look like for a while, and in fact, this is what was driving us, our development. And, uh, and it was really cool when we finally got to see what this looked like. Um, I'm not going to tell you what this one is. It's a puzzle for you. But I think I've given, maybe given enough information you can figure it out. Come by the table and check out the models. Tell me what you think it is. And uh, give me your favorite three numbers. And I can render one of these that probably no one else has ever seen for you right on the fly and email it to you as well. So we have more information at hyperbolicconeycombs.org. We have a, a preprint up there uh, explaining this in a lot more depth. And all of the code is available on GitHub. So thanks very much for your attention.